Cinnamon, are you there? Sorry to keep you waiting. Well, never mind. Let's get started. Okay, looks like it's a problem about differentiation. Seems easy. Leave it to me. Wait, we better proceed carefully. Meden, you're worrying too much. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Alright, let's move on. The derivative of x squared is 2x. Now then, next is... Huh? I haven't answered yet. Sundaman, look carefully at the mapping in the center. It's glowing suspiciously. Okay, um, this mapping says that differentiating 1 gives 0. Differentiating a constant gives 0, of course. Doesn't seem strange. Something feels strange. Huh? What do you mean? Let's rewrite the expressions on the left in the form of powers of x. Then it becomes like this. Remember that x to the power of 0 is 1, and negative exponents represent reciprocals. Now, if we extract the exponents from each term, it looks like this. Hmm, I see. The exponents are lined up in a consistent pattern. And when differentiating powers of x, the exponent decreases by 1. So the exponents on the right side should look like this. Yeah, nothing seems wrong. No, look closely here. This part should actually be x to the power of negative 1, in other words, 1 over x. Huh? Um, is that what you mean? Hmm, well, I guess you're right. Then we can't leave this as 1. Yes, that's true. A function whose derivative is 1 over x. That would be the natural logarithm of x. Now that you mention it, I think there was a function like that. By the way, do you feel something is off? Something off. Yeah, I do feel something is strange. Why is there a natural log of x only here? It feels like it's the only one that doesn't fit in. Exactly. That seems to be the problem this time. Here we have powers of x lined up. But there's one exception. And that is the natural logarithm of x. The function whose derivative is 1 over x is the only one that can't be written as a power of x. That's so strange. Let's look at this problem from a broader perspective. Come over here. As you know, this is the power rule. For now, let's assume n is an integer. When you differentiate a power of x, the exponent comes down as the coefficient. And then the exponent decreases by 1. Yup, I know that one well. For example, when n equals 3, it looks like this. Differentiating x cubed gives 3x squared. That's the one I answered earlier. Now here's where the problem starts. What happens when n equals 0? Um... First, x to the power of 0 is 1, so the left-hand side becomes the derivative of 1. On the right-hand side, the coefficient becomes 0, and the exponent of x becomes negative 1. Okay, that's correct. Here, x to the power of negative 1 means 1 over x, so we should have seen 1 over x appear here. But sadly, it's multiplied by 0 and completely erased. Well, maybe not sad, but yeah, it's definitely gone. Right, in the end the equation just says the derivative of 1 equals 0. It's not wrong that the derivative of a constant is 0, but that's not what we're looking for right now. And then the derivative of the natural logarithm comes out of nowhere. This is kind of weird. The power rule couldn't give us a function whose derivative is 1 over x. But that function came from a completely unrelated place. That's the logarithmic function. Looks like you're starting to see the mystery. This problem is also known in another form. Try calculating this. Hang on a sec. If we differentiate x to the n plus 1, it turns out like this. Then the n plus 1 cancels out in numerator and denominator, so the answer is x to the power of n. Exactly. And since differentiation and integration are inverses for single variable functions, we get the indefinite integral of a power of x. Ah, c is the constant of integration. I think there was a formula like that. But there's a trap in this formula. What? Yes, and that is... Right here. When n equals negative 1, the denominator becomes 0. If we take that into account, it looks like this. When n is not negative 1, it's the same as before. But when n equals negative 1, the result of the indefinite integral becomes the natural log of x. By the way, we use the absolute value of x to handle negative values, but for now, we're only considering positive x so you can ignore it. Got it. Again, the natural logarithm suddenly appears. What in the world is going on? Where did this natural log come from? That's a tough question. 
Anyway, let's review what kind of problem occurred with the power rule. When n equals 0, the left-hand side becomes the derivative of the constant 1, and the right-hand side becomes 0 times 1 over x. In other words, the 1 over x gets wiped out completely. Let's try to avoid that somehow. So, as a first step, let's extend the integer n to a real number p. This equation is also known to hold true. Oh yeah, I remember that. The original formula works even for negative x, but when we handle real exponents, things like x to the one half, or the square root of x, start to appear. So let's restrict x to positive values. Then divide both sides by p, and we get this equation. Yeah, that makes sense. Instead of plugging in p equals zero directly, let's take the limit as p approaches zero. Then the right-hand side becomes simply one over x, it's no longer zero. Oh, there it is! 1 over x! So what happens to the left-hand side? I'm super curious now. Let's investigate. What we want to know right now is this limit. Yep. If the expression inside approaches the natural logarithm, then we might see a connection between the derivative of powers and that of the natural logarithm. Now, instead of calculating the limit directly, let's rewrite the expression. Ah! Uh. Negative 1 appeared here, but since it's a constant, it vanishes when we differentiate anyway. Actually, this is a famous form. Really? Let's try to understand this expression visually. It might feel a bit tricky, but since x is fixed, and p is the variable here, we should use the pq plane instead of the xy plane. The pq plane? I haven't heard of that before. So p's on the horizontal axis and q on the vertical, right? That's exactly it. Now let's look at the function q equals x to the p. Remember, x is fixed here. As p varies, q changes accordingly. My brain's getting kind of scrambled. The graph intersects the q-axis at q equals 1, because x to the 0 equals 1. If we move right by p from the origin, q becomes x to the p. Okay, let's consider the line connecting those two points. The change in p is p, and the change in q is x to the p minus 1. So the expression represents the slope of that line. Ah, uh, yeah. As p approaches 0, the line connecting the two points becomes this. So we are actually finding the slope of the tangent at p equals 0. The slope of the tangent? That means we're doing differentiation. Sounds good. So we're differentiating x to the p with respect to p here. And we're evaluating the derivative at p equals 0. Be careful, it's with respect to p, not x. Alright, let's go ahead and calculate the derivative. First, let's rewrite it like this. x is equal to e to the natural log of x. When e is raised to some number and gives x, that number is the natural log of x. So yes, we can rewrite it that way. Yes! Now let's differentiate it with respect to p. If we treat the exponent as a single unit, this is just an exponential function with base e. So its shape stays the same when we differentiate. But since it's a composite function, we need to multiply by the derivative of the exponent. Alright, let's switch back to x here. When differentiating this with respect to p, the natural log of x is treated as a constant. Since the derivative of p with respect to p is 1, we're left with just the natural log of x. Nice, you're doing great! Now that we have the derivative of x to the p with respect to p, we just need to evaluate it at p equals 0. Since x to the 0 is 1, the answer is the natural log of x. That's a very interesting result. If we differentiate x to the p with respect to p and evaluate it at p equals 0, we get the natural logarithm, which is exactly what we were looking for. But there's still something strange about this. When differentiating the exponential function with base x, you first rewrite it in terms of base e. Some might feel that's a bit redundant. Wait, was that a mistake? No, actually that's a very important point. Because rewriting it that way makes the appearance of the natural logarithm much more intuitive. Let me offer one interpretation here. Earlier, Zundemann, you rewrote the expression like this at the beginning of the differentiation. This is a very basic equation, but it's actually at the heart of our whole discussion. Oh, uh, why is that? If we treat this as a function of p, 
on the right hand side, the input P is being scaled by the natural log of X. That means the natural log of X can be interpreted as the sensitivity of an exponential function. Hmm, I see what you mean. And when X equals E, that sensitivity becomes the natural log of E, which is 1. This shows that the exponential function with base E is considered the standard. Yeah, that makes sense. And if we return to viewing them as functions of x, we can see the connection between powers of x and the natural log of x. I feel like I kind of get it, but there's just so much info that my brain's unless. That's perfectly understandable. Let's organize what we have so far. We started this story with the power rule. This formula is very useful, but when p equals 0, the 1 over x on the right hand side disappears. Oh yeah, I remember that now. To solve that mystery, we rewrote the formula, like this. Then, instead of plugging in p equals 0, we considered the limit as p approaches 0. And we quickly saw that the right hand side becomes 1 over x. Meanwhile, the function being differentiated on the left, represents the slope of the line connecting two points on the graph. That's the graph of q equals x to the p in the pq plane. As p approaches 0, this gives us the slope of the tangent at the origin. Exactly. That slope is the natural log of x. That's right. So why does the natural logarithm appear here? This equation is at the heart of it. When viewed as a function of p, this equation shows that the input key is being scaled by the natural log of x. So we can interpret the natural logarithm as expressing the sensitivity of the exponential function. And that sensitivity shows up in the derivative the slope of the tangent line. Oh, that makes sense. By the way, some of you may have noticed, when taking the limit as p approaches 0, on the left, we took the limit before differentiating with respect to x, while on the right, we took the limit after differentiating. In short, the order of differentiation and taking the limit has been switched. Normally you'd have to be careful with that, but it's okay this time. Why? Because the answer came out exactly as expected. That feels kinda like cheating. But thinking this way, you can really see how differentiating powers of x and the natural log of x are connected. Looks like you got it. By the way, just one question. Why did the logarithm suddenly appear? Um... Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support this channel, consider becoming a member. In this video, we talk about the purpose of our membership. Check it out if you're interested. Well then, take care everyone. See you later.